Hello. Hello. I'm Caitlin Powell. And I'm Kate Butch. And this is Queers Gone By, the show where we talk about nostalgic film, TV and snacks and try to work out if that's what made us queer. Today. Today. Oh, Today, God. We're, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're doing a much, much requested. requested. Oh. Um, I'm going to tell you now, listeners, this is not as good as you remember it. <laughs> yeah. My God, this was awful. I was like, oh, I know we watching, usually do like, that at the end, but yeah, this. I thought we were watching like a newer version. I was like, this is this was definitely better back in the day, but no. Like I looked it up, we were watching. So it's on Netflix right now, and we were watching yes. what they term episode two, but which is made up of when you look at Wiki episodes two and twenty or something. It's Wait, so which weird. episode were you watching? Episode one from Netflix. Okay, because I was like, if I watch the wrong episode, I'm going to have to watch no, no. even more of this. It just makes no sense in terms of the order. Did I, you didn't, I watch, didn't even look at the Wikipedia. Did you watch one about revenge? Yes, and what about Moody okay, Margaret? Good. Oh, thank God for you. Okay, oh, good, now you've, good, revealed, okay. you've revealed what it is now. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, everyone. I'm so sorry. <laughs> for anyone who knows the canon of the show. <laughs> and anyone who can't read the title of the episode. <laughs> It's horrid, Henry. It's horrid, Henry. Oh, um, I would do so the. Much oh. I would do the theme tune, but the theme tune played, and I was like, I have no recollection of this. I had a bit of a recollection. It's it's this trying bloody... to be cool, and I'm like, no. no it's trying I'm... to be 2006 cool, which oh, is yeah. like Blink 182 and Panic Apple at the Disco Beam. kind of. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. very like emo rock, and there was some na 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 nas. Yeah, I feel like if I'd watched this, well, I did watch this as a kid. I feel like it would have given me delusions of grandeur. You know, I would have been like, oh, "I'm yes. really cool." No, you're not. You know, <laughs> <laughs> there are some very like there's a lot of parallels with Tracy Beaker. I would say. Yeah, in that I'm just on the side of everyone other than the main character. <laughs> Actually, this one, I'm on nobody's side. That's also fair. I'm on the side of the mum because she on has... Nobody's side. <laughs> Sorry? What was that? The chess for you there. Oh, I see. <laughs> um, I was on the side of the mum because she has lovely hair. True. And um, I did spend a lot of the time Googling who these people were and if they were if they'd done anything else. Uh-huh. Um, the voice of the mum is the innards of Bella from the Tweenies. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was a bit of a pissed She's inside in the Big Bella costume. <laughs> oh, right. I thought you meant there was an episode where someone plays a stomach. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So actually, Icon Bella is in Horrid Henry. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's not her voice, though. It's just her, her movements. Oh. What's yeah, the point? Was that on her IMDb? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> How little was on her IMDb? Quite well, these voice actors, they've done thousands of things. Oh right. Most of which I've never heard of. Sure. Also, someone's maybe the voice of Lofty from Bob the Builder. Oh, exciting. Well it's good I'll to tell know... you more as we go through, it's very exciting. It's good to know she can be the voice and a body. She's got range, you know. <laughs> She's verse. She's verse. <laughs> verse Are you queen. voice or body? Um <laughs> I think I'm body. (laughs) (laughs) I wish I was voice, but I'm such a body. (laughs) What are you? (laughs) Um, uh, I I probably voice. Stop relying on that voice. (laughs) Yeah, and that's why this works. (laughs) Where is the body? (laughs) Have you seen that meme that's got that? And then it's like Mary Magdalene opening the cave on (laughs) his... I saw the one that was like last week and it was um, US spies in North Korea. Oh my God. <laughs> Where, Where is, is the body? Amazing. I love it. Oh, right. So, um, right. Um, we start this episode with Perfect Peter. Yeah. Who I remember He's being more annoying. But actually, I'm just oh. like, oh, were you not a fan? I was so annoyed, but I was like, I, okay, I expect him to just go into this and be like, yep, yeah, cool. Peter follows the rules. He keeps his head down. No, 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 no. Perfect Peter is trash. He's not trash. He's just trying his best. 
He's not just trash, he's stupid trash as well. And I can't stand that combination. <laughs> okay, yeah, he is stupid. He is really stupid. Um, we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. he's singing well actually no we'll get to it now he's singing Frere Jocker and he's meant yeah. to be this big like nerd and he mm-hmm. only knows the first two lines which are Frere Jocker Frere Jocker oh is he not on he oh, doesn't wow. know he just goes da, 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 da. Oh, wow. I mean to be fair the summon the Matina is a tricky line I'll give that to you yeah but you roll with it <laughs> but you can yeah. bring it back for Dig Dag Dog yeah Does he, you know, bring it back for Ding Dang Dong? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of hysterical. Oh my god! <laughs> right, yeah. I spent too much time inside. Um, right. and then, oh, I was, I was at the time. I was like, Peter sounds really familiar. So this began my IMDb odyssey. Ah. Oh. Um, do you know, Peter is, the voice of Peter is pretty much a friend of the pod. Oh, who is he? Well, kind of. Peter is known to the pod. Um, <gasps> imagine, remember another animated blonde boy who is presented as being kind of clever, but is also really thick and is really annoying. Mona the Vampire? Wait, ooh. Mona the Vampire, the famous animated blonde boy. No, no, the boy in that I meant. Um, no, 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 no. Oh, uh, The voice of Perfect Peter yeah. is Kipper from The <gasps> Magic King. Is he? Wow. Yeah. Can we ask? He's also a lady. They... Oh. I was going to say, was oh, it a child? I, I would. Oh, hello, say that We'd love to see it. All of these children are played by women. That's feminism, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> On a plate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, Honestly, Kim Kardashian's learning law. This is the same level. <laughs> what a time to be alive for women. Imagine all of the characters in Horror and Henry played by the Kardashians. I don't have to imagine it. Like, that's my dreams every <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ. Um, okay. And then Henry turns up and he's like, what, you're painting? And no, he's not. Like, a picture of a picture of our mum. No, because he... Oh. Do you oh, know no. just so oh, yeah. this... No, am I right? Like, oh, no, I got part. it wrong. Yeah? Okay. Not that it matters. No one's, like, following along with us. But... <laughs> Peter's painting a picture of the bum. Yeah. Oh, I just pulled my headphones out with oh. anger. <laughs> we're we're um, reinserted, don't worry. Oh, good. And uh, Henry is behind a potted plant with a yes. mask and a little voice-changing device. And yes. he, he freaks out Peter. It wasn't good. Sorry. I, I need to be more committed to this. Um, oh, it was <laughs> a very tricky. dynamic scene. <laughs> Showing well, different relations. Like, <laughs> Harry's like, oh, I'm an alien. And yeah. Peter's like, whoa, and runs away. And that's it. Yeah, that's entirely the scene. Um, it's not bloody War of the Worlds, is it? No. Uh, Although they do they do bring that back a bit later, and I was quite impressed with the cultural references. But mm, yeah, there was certainly um, plot in this. Yes, ten minutes of I, plot. I each. can't remember most of it. No, <laughs> I, I wrote some stuff down. I think we'll we'll work it out. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, Peter then, is so startled that he trips over the paint, or does he just run away and then Henry splashes the paint everywhere? Yeah, he runs away and Henry's like, I'm going to draw something on this picture of my mum. And I was like, Hitler moustache, obviously. Classic. A classic of the genre. But no, it's just a, just a regular bog standard run of the mill moustache. <clears throat> well, I guess it was. Was this ITV or was it CBBC? It was CITV. Oh, wow. You think they would have allowed it then? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the rebellious younger sibling of CBBC. Yeah, yeah. Um... But no, what happened. He, uh, he gets into trouble. Oh, he splashes no. paint all around or something. Yeah. And then the mum's like, why have you drawn a moustache on me? Why is there paint on my floor? I'm like, sort out your priorities. There's paint on your floor. Yeah. Calm down about your moustache. And then Henry gets like put in like his room and told he's... What's the word? Were you... Horrid. What's the fucking... 
house detention. What is it? <laughs> Lockdown. Quarantine. No, no. Like coronavirus. <laughs> when a kid is put in their room and told not to come out. What the fuck is that called? Grounded? Yes, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they do say the iconic, um, don't be horrid, Henry. Oh, yeah, um, which amazing. is all I remember from this. I mean, it's no dumping ground dust or bog off, but like... No, but you know. But we'll take all we can get, really. Yeah, and Henry does this little monologue to the camera. And I think we're supposed to be on uh, on Henry's side, but I don't know. This just seemed to be a lesson about young boys and men not grasping boundaries. So I, I was not on his <laughs> side. That's fair. Um, yeah. Yeah, I... Yeah. Are you, did you read the books? See, yeah, I think I read I read a lot of the books. I don't think I saw this as much. I definitely did watch it, but I was more of a book gal when it came to Horrid Henry. And I feel like in the books, I was like, yeah, Henry. Yeah, exactly. Whereas he's like, I get sent to my room a lot, and I'm like, then change for the better. <laughs> <laughs> I end up having a lot of conversations with men like that. They're like, this time Thing keeps happening and I'm like well it's because you're a bad person like it's not difficult <laughs> oh my god sorry <laughs> I mean you're not wrong you're I'm not, not wrong, wrong. <laughs> I, um, was. Then... I was wrong don't worry I know I'm right <laughs> <laughs> he just shouts the word revenge a lot yeah um... Um, and I'm like okay but don't because they'll know what you're up to <laughs> yeah He's also really into metal. Uh, yes. Which, having dated a metalhead when I was about 15, 16, no, it's not the one. It's <laughs> not. No. Have I told you about it's this very guy? very loud. No. Told, oh, my God. There was one time when uh, we were walking back from one of his gigs. Hello. And oh, um, <laughs> this guy stopped us and asked for a light because he was smoking. Um, and the guy was a bit, like, unstable on his feet and just seemed a bit... You know, when you just look at someone, you're like, I'm not sure what your vibe is. You know? You know? Often. Yes. Um, and so I was about like, hmm. And then the, my boyfriend at the time gave him a light. And then we walked off. And I was like, oh, he was a bit weird. And he went, don't worry. I've got a knife in my pocket. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. How old was this guy? Uh, 17. Okay. I was expecting you to say like 30. But um... no. No, that was later that was like... in my in my terrible dating career. Um... Oh gosh! <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you've had, well, you've had a successful dating career because you've been dating. I've had a terrible <laughs> dating career uh, by which I mean nobody wants to date me. <laughs> I'm not sure it's a successful dating career. It just happened, you know. <laughs> you've had a dating career. <laughs> yes. Which is more than I can say. Okay, but like I wouldn't say just go for a guy with a knife. Like I wouldn't give that advice to you. That's my type. I feel like you're... <laughs> this guy had, like, a, a machete as well. Oh. Yeah. What's he up to now? Is he single? Um, he works on a vineyard for a bit. <laughs> this is so weird. A small, unpretentious winery. <laughs> yeah. Um, he, oh, he was a massive Tory when I dated him, which is part of the reason... Oh, you know, he broke up with me. Oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> Caitlin wasn't really sure of herself. <laughs> <laughs> this is so that is so surprising. Also, for a queer podcast, this is such like a this is such like a like this is queer propaganda. Like, do not date men. <laughs> <laughs> like, all my bi ladies love to see it, but also like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I am having a bit of a moment. I am sorry. <laughs> it's okay. We're going down memory lane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Um, um, he's got like a piece of. Oh, he goes to bed, and yeah. he wakes up, and all of his shit's been taken, and there's just like a piece of bread and a tape recorder. Yeah, which is like the act of a psychopath, right? Leaving this a is like a tape recorder. This is saw. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's a key inside. Perfect, Peter. Um, oh <laughs> the mom's like, Henry, we've taken all your stuff. Fuck off. Or whatever. Stay in here. Hang on. If there's a key inside someone, why don't we just wait till they pull it out? 
they've got a timer, haven't they? Yeah. Oh, wait, also, like, have... isn't it normally, like, not in their stomach? It's, like, under their skin or something gross like that. Yes, yes. Yeah, got it, sorry. I was wrong and to criticise. There's, <laughs> there's the little man on the bicycle. Yeah. Oh, my God, I've just had a horrible flashback um, to... Uh, there's an episode of Glee. Oh, God, they've been critical. Um, well, um, oh God. Kurt and Blaine, Darren and Chris, uh-huh. um, they get together, it's common knowledge, um, mm-hmm. uh, but then they're kind of like going through a rough patch, and <gasps> for some reason, Sue Sylvester's obsessed with them, Sue and like, has a shrine is, to them. Is the the one, the, te- the gym teacher? Jane Lynch, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. she, uh, Yeah, and she has like a shrine to them in some Who container or whatever. <gasps> Um, and then she traps them in a fake lift. What? And then a little Sue Sylvester cycles in on a bike. <laughs> and it's like, you're going to stay here till you fall back in love. What? <laughs> Did you make this up? What? No, it happened. <laughs> no, that's awful. That's, I, what? I've got so many I'll find questions. it for you. I'll send it to you. Okay. Oh, my God. Do you want to hear another awful Caitlyn X story? Um, Go on. I, so Is Caitlyn X your new phase, like Madonna's Madam X? Absolutely. Um, it's just where I describe <laughs> awful men that I've been with. While wearing an eye patch. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, I, you know this, and I'm not sure the listeners do. I am not great with blood or, like surgery or hospital like i'm not good with it i get very fainty yeah. very quickly um and i, oh, I said just, this um huh? absolutely i've just picked off a scab um. <laughs> <laughs> oh god i'm feeling faint. Um, <laughs> um so i but i'm really into horror films i'm just really into like i don't know like ghosts and shit like not anything too gory um okay like, I have to leave the cinema sometimes if stuff gets a bit too much. Um, and I was with this guy and I told him this and he was like, OK, let's watch a film. And he put on Saw and made me mo- watch all of the Saw films. Oh, no. Try and cure me of this affliction of not liking blood, which I think is a very sensible fear. Yes. Also, it's I don't think it's like a well-known, like authorised therapy practice no it's like that thing of like oh you're scared of spiders you should eat a spider it's like i don't think that's that's trauma that's added <laughs> trauma go to like some some hypnosis or some yeah. C- cbt <clears throat> yeah also just i'll just avoid blood it's fine like i just won't get it's Ill. tricky to avoid blood it's inside us all i know i know Anyway, I got this... out of bed too quickly and somehow used my very sharp, I my, my sharp thumbnail to like do a big scratch on my arm, okay. somehow, and it started bleeding this morning. I was fuming. Wait, how's that got to do with you getting up? What? You got up too I don't quickly. know how it happened. I, I like I was in bed and then I I got up quickly. Uh-huh. I, I don't know, Caitlin. <laughs> no, I'm just questioning the link between the scratch and the getting up. I d- I think. Like, I was what's maybe the link like, in the story? St- Scratching my arm, and then while I was getting up, and then went a bit too deep. In, I don't fucking know. What with the leveraging of the the body to get out of the bed? Is that what you're saying? Potentially. I'm, potentially. Okay, right. <laughs> anyway. Is this listenable? <laughs> Is this even? <laughs> well, I think we I'm picked having, a good time. I'm having PTSD like flashbacks. <laughs> you're talking about scabs. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I think we've picked the best time to talk absolute nonsense on this <laughs> podcast because no one else has got anything fucking better to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just keep listening. Listeners, you're, you're trapped. <laughs> um, oh my God, right. we should play Trapped. Yeah, why not? Things, How like, we do... should do some kind of... I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Patreon. Very exciting. <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, so he, can, he finds that he can play on the tape recorder. <clears throat> he can find Destruction FM. Yes. Uh, the lesser known sibling to Classic FM. <laughs> um, and just plays that really loudly. Yeah. And the mum's and like, paints please don't do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, did you ever have, like, I knew people who had, when they were kids, like, there would be a wall in their bedroom 
so that they could draw on it. And I'm like, you had some fucking wet parents. I never had that. I never had that. I was always like, wait, I, what? As a child, I did have some very bad anger issues. Um, the same. <laughs> The, the main reason that children are angry is because they don't have the vocabulary to express their complex feelings and emotions. Also, oh. I was like, hella gay and wasn't sure what that was. Um, oh, we're both very complex people. <laughs> my mum got me, made like this like anger box for when I was feeling angry. Um, and it was like a little, um, it was an Easter egg box left over from Easter. Uh, and inside was like pens and paper. There was some bubble wrap. There was something else, but it was it was a good way of managing your anger. And I think locking a child in a room with a piece of bread and the plot of Saw is not the way to go about it. Yeah, I think on the parenting scale, my parents were closer to the Saw method than your lovely <laughs> mum's method. But yeah, I agree. <laughs> oh, my dad balanced it out. Don't worry. Oh, good. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I wouldn't know. I didn't have a space to draw on the fucking walls. No, I just think that's crazy. I guess I mean, it's in encouraging the creativity. Universe. But to be honest, like, you're a drag queen, I'm a comedian. It's not like our creativity was stifled. True. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in the Horrid Henry universe, I think paint is just readily accessible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, even in lockdown, he manages to paint over all of this before his mum gets back. Yeah, with the help of Moody Margaret. And I'm like, where are you getting this paint from? Moody Margaret. This exact match of paint. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Well, Moody Margaret's not going to go to fucking B&Q by herself. They're going to be like, you're a child, get out. Can they Can they kick a child out of a B&Q? Well, that sounds really like... <laughs> you, you wouldn't... Uh, what's it called? <laughs> you steal wouldn't, a handbag. Yeah, you wouldn't steal a handbag. You wouldn't kick a child out of B&Q. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure paint is like... A substance. Yeah. I'm sure, sure there must be an age restriction. You're not going to let a 10 year old have a tin of Julux, are you? Okay. Do you want me to theorise how this is possible? Go on then. Okay, so they painted Henry's wall. Obviously, parents hate throwing paint away. I don't know why, it's just a thing. So they probably put it <laughs> in the shed, being like, oh, we'll use that for another thing. Moody Margaret pops over the little fence, grabs it, sends it up to him. You're, you're so right. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like another paint theory from you just a bit later. Oh, okay, okay. Excited. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you for that. I mean, if we actually explain what happens. He like sends her a little like, like what paper aeroplane, asking yeah. for help, and she they develop like a pulley system, and she sends him up some paint in exchange for being the leader of the. Purple, Purple hand, hand gang? Yeah. yeah. Um, which, again, uses paint. Yes. This is... I don't want the theory for the paint. I, I, they've probably just got some purple paint. Um, yeah. But, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, they do a little bit of a trade-off. Yes. And Moody Margaret, I think, is a little bit camp in this episode. Oh, agree, yeah. But even camper, I think, is sour Susan. Is she the redhead? Yeah, she's the one who's so clearly in love with Moody Margaret. Yeah, she's a queer icon. I was very on board with her. <laughs> and she's got a very, like, she speaks like she's got a blocked nose. Yes, yeah. Which I think is inherently queer, somehow. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um, the mum comes in and she's like, what's that painty smell? And I'm like, paint. <laughs> clearly. Uh, but he's like, oh, it's... So, uh, Moody Margaret's painting her playhouse at the end of her garden next door. Yeah. And Hence like, the strongest paint fumes. Yeah, and then he tries to like cover up, he tries to essentially play like he's learned his lesson. And she just sits down next to him and goes, Have you learned your lesson? And he's like, Yes. And I'm like, This is awful parenting. You <laughs> ever, at no point have you told him what he's done wrong. Yes. It's just, it pisses me right off, I swear to God. To be fair, her only experience of anything is being the insides of a tiny blue girl. <laughs> and that's, yeah. that's not her fault. <laughs> and if you're just thrown into parenting, you know what, you're right, I'm being unfair. <laughs> <laughs> so they and then the she's like, Shh. 
Oh, yes. Yeah. She's like, fine, fine. You can, you can leave your room. Yes. And shut your window because the paint smells. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Ralph is there. Which one's Ralph? Is is it Rotten Ralph, or am I thinking of that cat? Robbie Rotten. No. Um. Yeah. No. Maybe. There was there was like an animated show called Rotten Ralph, which was like a red cat, oh. and he was just a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Can we watch that? Because I would vibe Absolutely. with that. Absolutely. <laughs> By all means. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I think he's also, this guy's also called Rotten Ralph and he's Henry's best friend. Okay. Is he the one who was kind of a snack for an animated child? <laughs> <laughs> is that bad? It's not bad, isn't it? I think at the time I was attracted to Rotten Ralph. There we go. That's essentially what I was saying. <laughs> Sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like when like you can be attracted, you can have been attracted to that live action Peter Pan. Yeah. At the time. Yes, I think I. But was... like, I'm not going to watch it and be like that child's fit now. Oh no, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like I feel like I would have. Feel like him and Susan, I would have been like, as a kid, like, oh, nice, you know. <laughs> sure. Okay, we'll go with that. <laughs> no, Ray Francis, I go nice. <laughs> <laughs> And they plot revenge using this alien mask. Yes. And then they do a full, like, Orson Welles radio broadcast. Yeah. To Peter and his friends. Mm-hmm. And persuade them I think them that now they're singing they're... the Sky Boat song now. We love a public domain tune. <laughs> yeah. And they're painting and they get persuaded that the alien invasion is coming. And the only way to save themselves is to paint their house blue yeah and paint themselves blue as well yeah and i'm like this seems like when it comes to pranks i'm like you're halfway there henry like you it's just the things you make people do aren't that funny yeah henry's pranks either are banal or literally (laughs) life-threatening which we'll get to (laughs) yeah um yeah, his, it's not great. And then again, no. where do they get all this blue paint from? I know, right? And then the dad comes home and Peter paints his dad blue. And it's very clear that the kid is delusional and has been swayed in some way. Like, he's called Perfect Peter. He wouldn't normally do this. And it, I don't I, think perfect on his birth certificate. I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But like they Perfect's know him first to name. be Peter's his middle name. Yeah, yeah. They know him to be like a good boy. Why would he do this? It's so stupid. Oh. Uh, but then he just gets grounded or whatever. Yeah, and it's hilarious. And that's ha, ha, ha. The end of the episode? <laughs> yeah. Episode oh no. Henry a. shouts um he's like, Oh, um Peter's been grounded, which means I am <laughs> ah! and then shouts something and I have no I watched this about three times. I yeah, couldn't work I did out. Too. What he was I didn't saying. work out what was happening. Um but good for them. Listeners, we'll if you try. want to listen to it, let us know. Um But understandable if you don't want to listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah. Um And then we're on episode B. Yeah. Sorry, I mean yeah, on. let's talk about it. <laughs> Which kicks off with Peter in the trash, where he belongs. <laughs> you know what? You are persuading me, but he's a little trash boy. So. <laughs> <laughs> and the mum was like, why is Peter in the trash? Get him out. Because Margaret's coming to stay. Did they at any point explain why? Uh, yes, because her parents have gone on holiday, which seems why? irresponsible. Why didn't she go on holiday with them? Yeah, wait till the school... I didn't know... Like. Maybe my parents maybe go away for the weekend. Yeah. Or whatever. But then, like, my aunt or my grandma would come and stay. Yeah. And look after us. But, like, my parents would not go on a full-blown holiday without us. Yeah, I think my parents did once for, like, an uh, an anniversary or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, they wouldn't have just dropped me off at a, at a random friend's house. Yeah, because yeah. they're not even, like... Yeah, Margaret and Henry... Like, uh, like, they're supposed to be, like... This is what I didn't get. In the first episode, they're like a team. They help each other. There's a bit of tension there, but they're clearly friends. When she says, Margaret's coming to stay, Henry is like disgusted. Like he's so upset. I don't but understand why does it. it. Why doesn't Margaret stay at Susan's? They're best friends. That is a point. They get on, yeah. crucially. 
Oh, I don't know. Um, uh. And as a punishment for putting his little brother in the, the trash, he, uh, oh God, Margaret is given Henry's room to stay in. And I'm yes. like, cool. That seems correct. Like Henry, I don't, I don't get this with boys. They do things that are bad, and then are surprised when there are consequences. It's <laughs> so annoying. He's like, what? And it's like, well, you did, you did put a small boy in a trash can. Oh my god, <laughs> sorry, I'm so upset. <laughs> Just, That's oh terrible. my god. Um, speaking of a trash can, <laughs> yeah, this gets it's... like collected in the year two thousand and six. Why is it not a wheelie bin? It is Britain. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. You they're, in like a ter- they're not in, like, the countryside. They're in a terraced house. Yeah. You're With honestly a- making oh. so many points this episode. It's amazing. I, I mean, I have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Margaret turns up. Yes. And I'm like, how long is she fucking moving in for? Yeah, this doesn't make any sense either. She's got boxes on boxes, uh, bags yeah. on bags, and a trumpet. And posters and shit. Yeah. Yeah, bizarre. And like a dolls and stuffed toys. Yeah. Like these, these parents go on a fucking round the world 30 day cruise. It's, it's so weird. And also they come back pretty sharpish later, so they can't be that far away. <laughs> Maybe they weren't going on holiday at all. Maybe they just wanted to shot of her. <laughs> That's fair enough. Yeah, because she had Holiday at sweet. home. When she comes in, she's like, oh, thank you so much for having me. I don't fucking know. Um, and then the, oh, yeah, the parents go, are like, she's an angel. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, you called her moody. She's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's then I was like. certificate. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, um, Henry's dad sounds really familiar. I'm going to Google him now. Oh, who's that? Did you ever watch The Fimbles? Oh god, that rings a bell. Wait, is that with an I mean, F we were or a both TH? With a with an F. We were both oh. fully too old to watch the Fimbles, but I definitely have seen it. Um well, are they little like fluffy things? That could quite, be anything. They're, they're, they're people in suits. Um, um and they look like um uh kind of like clangers. clangers. Oh, okay. Like, oh, you keep going in and out. Oh, they're, they're stripey. Stripey big clanger boys. They look a bit like... Yes, I remember Art seeing Fox. these. Yep. Little bear well, aardvark things. The voice of the dad is the voice of Roly Mo. Roly Mo. Oh, the mole. Yeah. And oh. of the latest spin-off, the Roly Mo show. Um, <laughs> who reads stories. And how, is Welsh. How did you think that voice was familiar? I mean, it's also familiar because I watched Horrid Henry. Oh, okay, right. I mean, okay. but, um, I've got. Wow. I, I, am I good with voices? I don't know. I mean, you recognise like, literally every single person in everything. So, well, my mum's so. a speech therapist, so maybe that might have something to so do. So it's with hereditary. It. <laughs> it's hereditary. Yes. Yes. Um, Want to see that? Film? She went to UCL, you know. Oh, that makes two of us. Yes. Hello. Um, <laughs> and also, I'm going to get decapitated with my head out the window. Um, Wait, what? That's what happens in Hereditary. Oh, uh, what? Well, don't spoil it. I haven't seen it. So it happens quite early on. Okay. The little girl who was Matilda on Broadway. <laughs> okay. Wait, which one? The really head out- one. Yeah, the, with the weird face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, she sticks her head out the window and someone's driving down the motorway and then a sign fucking decapitates her. Uh, what? I can't and then they believe stick her head back that. on. What? They no, don't head back anymore. And... This is bizarre. What? No. Tony Collette does witchcraft, I think, from what I remember. I could never have guessed that. I can't really remember it. I just remember Tony Collette being good at it. Yeah. Um, Oscar winning. Have you seen... No, Oscar have you should seen... have been nominated. Oscar yeah. snubbed. Have you yeah. seen um, United States of Tara? No, but I've heard of it. What oh, it? Tony Collette's in it. She plays a woman who has dissociative identity disorder. Oh, um, commonly known getting, as multiple personality disorder. That's getting very popular on YouTube right now because Trisha Paytas pretended to have it. If you're a listener and you know about that, message me because I need to talk to someone about it. Anyway, Trisha Paytas is so weird. She's awful. Not, uh, not least because I keep getting her confused with Kim Patras. 
Um, How dare you? They have this. They have similar she, names. She's a trans icon. Wait, actually, <laughs> I thought Trisha Paytas was trans. Yes. <laughs> Uh, um, honestly, Trisha Paytas is clearly fiddling with a non-binary idea about herself. Wait, does that make sense? As in, she's 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 clearly got that idea in her head about herself, and that's how she identifies. But she keeps saying shit like, "I'm a trans man, but I love my like womanly body, and I want to be a woman. I'm still a trans man." It's like I, I think you mean non-binary. I think that's what you mean, but you keep changing it every time. It's so annoying. She did a really good um, cover of Hey Now, Hey Now, This Is What Dreams Are Made Of. Yes, and an excellent cover of that song from High School Musical 2. <laughs> anyway, um, that, Tony Collette's great. Her, get my shot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, she does. I've got that. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, um, Tony Collette is great. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't know. How do we get on to bloody hereditary? Um, <laughs> um, uh... Voices, Rolly Moe. Okay, I see. Yeah, speech therapist. Um, wow. <laughs> back to Horrid Henry. Um, yeah, so the parents leave, having been like, our daughter's an angel, and Moody Margaret switches on a dime, turns on a dime, and is, she does a fake sneeze, and it's like... Oh, sh- Bloody uh-huh. Tracy Beaker wannabe bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the dumping She's like, dust. I'm allergic to all this dust. Yeah. Um, and then she's like, it's uh, at my house, we eat at six o'clock. I was like, wow, it's early. What, uh, what time do you eat? Uh, like 7.30, 8? <laughs> I eat at like 5.30. Really? Ah. <laughs> you got to watch Pointless with your tea. Oh, that's quite cute. Yeah, I'm on board with that. I support, I support this venture. <laughs> do you call it dinner or tea or supper or... A, uh, dinner on Midlands, aren't I? You call it tea, don't you? Yeah, we're having a tea. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> what do you call the meal, like, in around midday? See, now, weirdly, we call it lunch. Okay, yeah. I don't understand why people call that dinner. I mean, at school you had a dinner lady. This is true. I mean, I don't um, like it, but it's true. <laughs> yeah, but, like, my mum is from Luton, so we... We're southern in that regard. Oh, I see, I see. Got you. Luton, where dreams go to die. Um, <laughs> and then... Um, oh, Henry does... Um, it's another wannabe Tracy Beaker animation imagination. Uh, oh, yeah. But the show's already animated, so it just has to be like it was drawn by a blind child. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> so it's like, when I'm king, I'm going to kill everyone or whatever. Yeah, it's not quite gonna... the Tracy Beaker magic. No, um, no. we don't have any sepia sadness afterwards. No, um, we do. Have... I got that so sepia, when... sepia sadness. <laughs> when the mum's like, "Oh well, we'll vacuum," because that's a very simple solution to someone with allergies. Henry and his dad are like, oh, "We will," and it's like these fucking men are liabilities. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> we got a new vacuum the other day. Did you? Very exciting. Um, it's it's a it Henry. Henry. It's a green. He- it's, a Henry. it's green Henry. Don't be horrid, Henry. Um, <laughs> it's a green Henry um, for um, pet hair. Oh, exciting! And it's called Henry Pet. Henry Pet. So we're like, you're right, Henry Pet. Oh, <laughs> Henry Pet. Love that. That's great. Um, I did make a note. Um, I hate everyone in this. You personally. I don't know why. Yeah, I, I hate everyone okay. in this this terrible show. Um, I think it's the, around the point that Peter kisses his bunny goodnight and Henry's like, that's gross. Yeah, because I'm like, Henry, don't be an arsehole, but also Peter, come on. I don't think Henry's going to react very well when in 10 years' time Peter comes out as gay. No, I agree. I don't think he's going to react very well when his future girlfriend tells him that she isn't on the pill, can you wear a condom, please? <laughs> He's going to be one of those cunts who's like, oh, it's uncomfortable. Grow up. I just, oh, <laughs> you're on one today. I'm so sorry. Henry's going to share some like racist memes. Yeah, yeah. He votes leave in the future. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Um, But he'll clap for the NHS. 
Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And he'll he'll uh, put on Facebook if his neighbours aren't doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> the world we live in right now. Jesus Christ. Um, uh, and they go to bed um, and, well, they're woken up at 6am. Yeah, this is weird. Uh, by Margaret and a fucking trumpet. Yeah. Doing, like, a morning Just... alarm call or whatever. Oh yeah, do 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 like that. Yeah, isn't that okay? Isn't that Tesco mobile thing? Do 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 do. Not what you do. Oh no, that's a Nokia. No, no, no. I think it ended up being um, you got to get a gimmick from Gypsy when she plays the trumpet. Ah, I only know the big dramatic Melba Staunton song. Sorry. Up. Oh, it's great. You should watch it. Okay. I'm sure you can find it. <gasps> um, side note, um, I watched the other day, it's um, a, mus- a new musical called Flowers for Mrs. Harris. Oh, what's that? It's about this woman who, um, she's a char lady in like the 50s. Um, okay. And she starts cleaning this new lady's house. Mm-hmm. And she sees this lady's Christian Dior dress. Oh. And is like, I want one of those. I mean, you would. And so she- she works for like like she she slaves away for like three years to okay. afford to go to Paris oh. to go to the house of Dior. Wait, how much does she does she know how much the dress is? It's um they work it out and it's like four hundred and fifty pounds, like old pounds. Oh right, okay, right. Which I, is, I was and she fearing, gets like three shillings a week. I was fearing she'd go there and not know how much it was and then it'd be horrible and I'd cry. Anyway, carry on. Well, well, Kate, oh, no. um, <laughs> oh God, I'm gonna cry. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna cry. Spoil, I'm not gonna steal it for you, but she gets steal it for you, spoil it for you. But she gets there and there's a whole um parade of Dior dresses and oh. my little gay heart. There's so many gay people just gasping um, on stage <laughs> at the audience. Um, Love that. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, it's amazing. It's on the Chichester Festival Theatre website, um, Ooh. but it's only on there until the eighth of May. Oh, wait, you can watch it on the website? Yeah, they've released it for free. For oh, day. that's lovely. Okay, lovely. Only we'll until the 8th of May. So, listeners and Caitlin, get on it. We'll do, we'll do. I was um, for Mrs. Harris. Um, right, can anyway. we finish this fucking episode <laughs> Horrid Henry? I hate it. <laughs> um, uh, and then... They make breakfast uh, uh, yeah. for her. Because she's being she bratty. Um, I'm sure there's, there's some kind of... Thing. There's a scene. There's a scene with corn the night before that is incredibly gross. That they, her mum oh, puts yeah. her hands all over a corn, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't pop the corns person's... and feed the children. <laughs> you would not touch another person's corn. <laughs> you wouldn't steal a handbag. <laughs> you wouldn't touch another person's corn. You wouldn't throw a kid out of B and Q. We're gonna have to make that, aren't we? Now, but yeah. after. <laughs> um... Uh, then, so yeah, she reads Henry's. Oh, Henry like devises a plan to fuck yes. with her and get. He's her. like, oh, just writing in my diary, my very secret diary that I hope you do not read. And she, of course, that I but with this key that I'm going to pretend to drop. Oh, yeah. Do you remember a lockable diary? What a time! Oh, I had a lockable diary with a lockable like little like he has a little lockable. I don't know box. And I just remember, used like, it to like I don't know bitch about kids at school. I don't know why it's so secretive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, do you remember thinking that your diary was the most important piece of literature ever yeah. written? Yeah. And it was like, today I walked my dog. Yeah, <laughs> I think every kid had a moment of, maybe I'm Anne Frank. No, you're not Anne Frank. <laughs> I literally did! This is so bad! <laughs> <laughs> I, I went... I but okay. <laughs> I went to the Anne Frank Museum. Oh, no. In, um... Amsterdam. Amsterdam. I wrote yeah. in the book, I hope that she would have been a believer. Um, <laughs> Correct. But this, okay, this is kind of gets worse because my friend's grandpa was the, um, he passed away recently. Um, oh. RIP. Um, okay. Very sad. Um, but he had an amazing life. He was f- best friends with the person that Anne Frank um, wrote about, like the boyfriend, like the person that she fancied. Oh, wow. And had the only picture of him in existence. Christ. Um, so did she, did, she, um, did he know Anne Frank? I don't think he knew... I don't, I don't know if he knew her. Um, he was on the kinder... He was like one of the last people on kinder transport. Um, oh, God. 
but um, he donated. He they I think they offered him millions of pounds to buy this picture from him in uh-huh. the museum, yeah. um, and he was like, no, just just have it. Um, oh, and so lovely. and he used to go there quite a lot, and, like treated like royalty there. <laughs> um, oh wow! And they were all there, like, really like grateful to him, and um, we got to go to we went with him, and we got to oh. go to like the bits that aren't over to the public, which was amazing. Oh, um, wow. And then little me bought a fucking notebook. Oh, God. <laughs> no, no, no. This was such a touching story. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This week on Kate's a cunt. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. And I was like, we went to the Anne Frank Museum today. Here's my attempt or whatever. No, no, no. <laughs> to be fair, it was really no. fucking funny. Um <laughs> Oh God! That's gonna see if I can find right it. There. Honestly, that's stand up. <laughs> Write it now. I mean, this podcast just me reading from this diary. <laughs> Get a really famous actor to read from it. Like it's really official. <laughs> Judy Dench. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, <laughs> um, and then he, so she reads the diary, and in it, he's written. Um, I I don't really hope she doesn't put Peter in a bin. Because that would be terrible, and I'd get into trouble. Yes, because Peter okay. would never blame a guest. Yeah, and it's like, okay, I can see why she would put him in the bin in that case. That's a logical thing to do when she thinks what she thinks. What I don't understand is why she then puts him out for delivery. Delivery, <laughs> pick it up. That is murder, Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> put Peter in the bin, but don't put him in the bin on bin day. Yeah, don't put him out for collect for collection. That's the phrase. Like, <laughs> he's gonna. She get literally crushed. like waves down the bin lorry. <laughs> he's gonna get crushed up. His little bones can't fit. And I think, like, I'm sure as a child, I knew that there were like blades in a bin lorry. Yeah. Wow. Or maybe I just because I had seen Toy Story three. Maybe you can also that see them when you're driving one. behind one. Yeah, they make a big loud noise. Yeah. Um, um, so she yeah. tries to murder a child. Um, and Henry but... sends an email during this time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the mum and dad run out. <laughs> yeah. And, and they find out. They're like, what? The mum and dad, oh, the mum and dad's like, where's Peter? And then what happens? Henry's like, oh, he's in the bin. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> and then they're awful. like, Peter, no, stop. And like, Split second before he gets fucking Chomped. mushed up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, um, and they're like, Peter, why are you in the trash? Um, and I'm and like... he has a moment where he's not sure what to do. I, I, I'm kind of like, Peter, why are you in the trash? I got in there. What do you mean? Because Peter's not, like, tiny. It's not like Margaret picked him up and put it in there. Yeah, we do know. They've been see, like, like, you should get in the trash. They tell him to. And Peter is a sentient human being ish <laughs> who needs to take responsibility for his own actions. It isn't runs he, in the bloody family. Isn't he like five? I think he's older than five. Okay. Okay. I don't know. I, I'd, I'd say he was like eight. He's a sensitive soul. But even at eight, I was like, I'm not going to get in the bin. <laughs> Yeah, but maybe they were threatening him. I don't know. I'm a Peter apologist. I'm sorry. What value does getting in the bin... Like, what? what's it going to do for me, getting in the bin? Well, they probably threaten him. He doesn't enjoy it. No, he doesn't. Little Peter. I'd be like, I don't want to get in the bin. He could probably run faster than that. No, I guess not. They're quite long-legged. Mm. So anyway, Peter's in a quandary because either he tells on the guest or he lies and says it was Henry. Yeah. Um, but he's, and he tells he's, on the guest. He tells on the guest, which is fair. Yeah. Um, and then That's Henry great. pushes some stuff out of his window. Yeah, and pretends Margaret did it. And then her parents arrive, because that's the email Henry sent. Can you tell I'm trying to rush ago. through this? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, and then that's the end of it. Uh, well, thanks for the end of the podcast. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I have never... You know on Netflix, when it's like... We're watching the next episode. I have never clicked cancel more quickly. It's <laughs> <laughs> like scrambling. Like... <laughs> Literally, it was this. I 
So thanks for suggesting it, but also fuck you all <laughs> for suggesting it. I mean, to be fair, I remember it being better than it was. I was quite looking forward yeah. to it. And then I was I like, think, oh no. I feel like the books might hold up. I'm not being, I'm not certain. I don't have them, so I can't check, but like, I feel like they would hold Maybe up. Maybe it's the book. Maybe the yeah. book has like tinted our memory. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah. Anyway. Um, is it, is it camp? Uh, well, Susan is queer. We've agreed. That. Susan is in love with Margaret. Yes. Um, apart from that, I don't think it's very Peter's camp. gay. Peter is gay, yes. But I don't think he's, he, he will be camp. Peter's like shit blonde child gay. Yeah, he'll grow into his, like, there'll Which... be. He's going to discover I... drag when he's like 17 and become insufferable. But then he'll grow into it. It's fine. You know what I mean? I think I'm Peter. I think you might be. <laughs> Irritating blonde child discovers drag <laughs> in the teenage years, becomes insufferable. Doesn't really grow out of that. <laughs> no, I think. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> You're still in process. You're growing. Everyone's everyone's a journey. You can take multitudes. I am multitudes. but young. Yeah. <laughs> um, did it make us queer? Um, I definitely Maybe... fancied Susan. And I probably fancied Ralph. I say this, but I don't really remember her, but she seemed like the kind of one I'd fancy. <laughs> um, I'm sure they're like, there are some other people that they're friends with who were, I was probably more into. <clears throat> yeah. Does Peter I can't remember any friends? of their names. Do they go in the books, they go more into detail of Peter's friends as well? I feel like they do. I don't know. Is there someone called Piers? Yes, I think so. I is think, that their cousin? I, think, I feel like that might be... Oh, yeah. I feel like there's like a perfect Peter equivalent, but Henry's age. Like either perfect at school Peter or parallel. maybe the cousin. <laughs> yes. Um, either at school or like like you say a cousin or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. And there's there's the film, isn't there? There's a live action film which features many We're friends. We're not of watching it. Oh really? Dick and Dom. Oh god, of course it and does. Somehow Angelica Houston was tricked into this. No, Angelica, why? Quite a main role. Is she the mup? She's Miss Battleaxe, I think, the teacher. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, so she she was she couldn't get the part of Miss Trunchbull, so she went for that. I think that's what we're learning. <sighs> Fair enough. Yeah. Um, I mean, she also plays another great role, Darville, in The Witches again. But um, yes, I think like there's a lot of like British comedy people. Yeah. Are in it? Like, mm-hmm. I think Matthew Horn plays the dad. I feel um, like this is something Bill Nye would have been tricked into doing. Yeah, I think you might actually be right there. Wait, genuinely? I, I, I'm going to IMDb the film. Okay. Um, give me a second. Okay. Um. Well, if for some reason you enjoyed this, you can follow us at Quiz Gone By on Twitter. Richard E. Grant. Oh, my God, love him. <laughs> Rebecca Front. Oh, babes, no. Ellen oh, Ledger at Noel Fielding. Why? Kimberly Walsh. Tiger Drew Honey. Oh. Prunella Scales. Prunella Scales. No, love Prunella. <laughs> wow, this is upsetting. Awful. Um, yeah, uh, if you enjoyed the podcast. <laughs> yeah, for some reason. Um, seek help. Yeah. Um, we should we should advertise, like, better help on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, we should. Although I feel it's actually not as good as it's supposed to be. Is what oh, I okay. I don't know. There was, like, a big scandal about people advertising it. I don't know. Um, no, I don't want to make claims. Cool child line. Wait, of course I want to make claims. What am I talking about? <laughs> Uh, if you don't want to do better help or any other kind of online therapy called Childline, Esther Ranson, I'm sure, will help you out. Um, follow us on social media. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, at Caitlin R. Powell on Instagram, at Caitlin PWLL on Twitter. At Kate Butch one on all of the above. At Quiz oh. Gone By. Yeah. Um, do you have anything to plug in the coming week? <laughs> well. No, do you? Um, wh- oh, wait, uh, aren't you doing a live show? Oh, yes, show? I'm, I'm well, doing a live, live show. But... Well, you know I mean. a live ish show. Yeah. Um, Curiosity on Saturday, May the 2nd. Um, 
if you're listening to this in the future, you've missed it, but you probably watch it back. Um, <laughs> yeah. If you're a fan of the podcast, you may also enjoy the performance that I'm doing. Wink, wink. Yes. People keep asking, like, oh, why don't you do those, like, um, Zoom comedy gigs? And I'm like, I would rather die, genuinely. It seems like the worst experience you could ever have. Telling jokes. Just, like, on, doing jokes with, into the ether. Yeah, with, with obviously, like, it's going to, what's it called? Like, tr- not track. Where it, it doesn't, we get cut off and nothing flows properly. So you can't deliver a joke in that environment. I don't know. It just seems awful. Why would you do that? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, it's different, like, with drag, like, you can just make a little like, short film. Yeah. And that's kind of fine. Yeah. But, yeah, with, like, a... Could you do, like, a sketch? You could, I, but I think YouTube is just better for that. If I keep yeah. saying I'm going to make a YouTube on this, one day I will. So, watch out for my YouTube. YouTube. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll see you uh, next week. Yes. Um, don't better. be worried in the meantime don't it's something be better please <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what we're doing I'm quite excited to find out what it's going to be um, um, oh it's a good one I've just seen my little notes yes very exciting does it feature a dead child um it depends on your definition of child murdered child oh uh no Wait, I think what it might if it's what I'm thinking of what it is what are you thinking I'll ask of? it anyway we'll keep you guessing with that <laughs> <laughs> listeners <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not like I don't know. Not lovely bones. What's it called? <laughs> <laughs> lovely bones. It's not the lovely bones. But um, dwell on that, listeners, for a week. Uh, we'll see you next time. But bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.